Exactly. Right. right, and you know, practices like random suspicionless searches for, for drugs and so forth are really the, the least effective law enforcement activities that our police can be doing. Right. You know, to the extent that our resources have the effect of discouraging that type of policing, it's definitely a net gain for the community. Yeah, well, I, I, I brought up that the video at this point because, um, I mean, here, here we are, three white boys talking about the drug war, but it's but 50 percent of the population in, pr in prisons across the country are black Americans, you know, about 50. Uh, I don't know what the a lot of Hispanics disproportionate mm -hmm. to their population, mm -hmm. and it's that community that is disproportionately affected by this whole abusive criminal injustice system, as I like to call it. Absolutely, we know that. Um, you know, the drug use statistics show that uh, African Americans, uh, Latinos, whites use and abuse drugs at almost the exact same rates, about 13 percent or so. Right. Yet, why is it that, uh, that African Americans, Latinos are uh, more likely to be pulled over, arrested, jailed, uh, pretty much at every level of the criminal justice system, it's more and more and more likely why do you think that is? to be? Well, you know, some would argue that uh, there's a few reasons. Well, one, there is there is racial profiling, there's racism. Also, it could it could be something that's correlated with income as well, for sure. So that's something that and access to legal resources yeah, and access to legal resources. So that could be uh, something else that's correlated. I, I heard I was telling about a documentary I saw recently, and this uh, one Yale law professor, black American, said that if well, he said at Yale. The kids use drugs as much as they did in the project down in New Haven. Sure. But if the police arrested Yale undergraduates to the same degree as they arrested people in the projects, mm. the district attorney would be out of a job on Monday morning. Right. Um, and they do that because black Americans are essentially a powerless group. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so. Um, Billy Murphy. Uh, Who's a, he's, a, he's a former judge and he's a trial lawyer, defense attorney uh, in Baltimore who's going to be our, our on-screen narrator uh, for, for street law. Uh, he's an, a very amazing guy and he, he says uh, in Baltimore drugs are legal if you're white because there's not a single outstanding you know, warrant or investigation against a white drug dealer in Baltimore. I mean that that says it. Okay. Mm. Uh, recently, you spent a little time, uh, I guess, last August, uh, with the D.C. police. Mm -hmm. uh, you you both went out, uh, uh, spent the evening with with them, or tell us a little bit about what you learned. Um, you no, know, it was uh, it was quite an experience, and it's very exciting. Um, it really gives you a whole different perspective on the city. You know, we're driving around neighborhoods that you know I spend a lot of time in, uh, and you know suddenly I felt like I was on the other side of the glass. You know, mm. looking out from the police car uh, at the the people on the street passing by, and you know you hear the calls come in on the radio, and it's just it's just a thrilling, thrilling experience, and uh, you know very refreshing to see a lot of a lot of very competent, very professional police work being done. And you know, at the end of the whole experience, I mean, it really, it really served, I think, to 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 strengthen our resolve to 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 oppose you know silly, random sorts of policing that we hear about going on around the country. That you know, here in D.C., we have you know serious crime problems going you know going on all the time. You know, people that are calling the police for assistance with a problem. And they want somebody to be able to show up as soon as possible and, and address their concerns. And, and that's what policing is all about. I mean, being there to, to meet those community needs and be able to do so efficient, efficiently. And I just, you know, at, at no point uh, during, during the entire experience did we see a situation where the Constitution seemed likely to be an obstacle towards dealing with the, the biggest problems that were happening uh, around the city. And so, so for us, it was just, you know, really easy. To, to see how you know the constitutional rights that our organization promotes um, and that you know Americans cherish are, are not at all incompatible with solving crime problems you know in a big city or probably anywhere else in the country. Right. In fact, good policing 
is when police officers respect the Constitution. I mean, mm -hmm. for example, I mean, when we were uh, about you know out with uh, with Sergeant Brett Parson, um, you know, there was, there was, he got a call from a girl who had overdosed on on prescription medication, and, and he you know went in, and he counseled her, and you know uh, made sure she got. Uh, Care from the emergency emergency medical you know you know group and so it was things like that. There was another. He was the, we were the first on a scene for uh, a hit and run, a violent hit and run, and we saw a young man face down, bloody, uh, who later uh, after that had had actually died as a result of this. And so I mean this is legitimate, you know, policing. And so uh, the the idea that um, if someone like uh, the sergeant were busy trying to find uh, people who are involved in low-level consensual crimes. I mean, the, the 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 proportionality just isn't there of necessity. It'd just be such a waste of of his time, the taxpayer's time, to take someone like that and having them wasting their time uh, controlling what people smoke or put in their own bodies instead of mm -hmm. responding to real dire needs. Mm -hmm. That just strikes me as uh, right. profound. And you see contrast, you know, dealing with those situations to the practice of sniffing around dorm rooms on a college <laughs> campus, you know, walking up and down the hallways trying to smell somebody smoking something in their room and, and try to bust them and shred their mattress open with an exacto right. knife to see what's in there. I mean, it's just, th these are two completely different type of activities. Mm -hmm. you know, one has community interests in mind, the other clearly does yeah. not. Yeah, especially living in a city here which has a very high uh, murder rate. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. so it was, it was interesting, one of the things that that essentially, they call it, you know, clearing the board is, uh, you know, Officer Parson was responding to calls. And that's actually something that's another interesting thing that, um, you know, when we talk to people, we tell them, we said, remember, if you're at... If you're in a situation, you're at a party or something like that, and police come to your door, or generally you, you encounter police, oftentimes they're there because they're responding to a call, and they're required to respond to every call. Mm -hmm. So assume that they're not there to investigate you or deprive you of your rights, and, and ask them, mm -hmm. you know, officer, what's, what seems to be the problem? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, uh, we got a noise complaint. Could you please turn down your, your stereo? No problem, officer. You go back inside, close the door behind you because you didn't let him inside. Don't give mm -hmm. him a chance to troll. You know, sure, you yeah. turn the music down. And that's, that's the non-event that, that happens if you're respectful mm -hmm. uh, to, to police and understanding of why they're there. Mm -hmm. I've never had a bad experience with the Metropolitan Police Department showing up at a party. And it's, it's really quite common for Steve and I to be called upon if we're at a social <laughs> gathering and uh, the police happen to, to show up. We, we will be often contacted or volunteer to, to come to the door but to I always say, say a few words. But it really is just that simple, you know. We, what, what's the problem? Oh, we got a noise complaint. We'll keep it down. I mean, it's it's something you know that that can uh, blow over very very quickly. And so, mm -hmm. being polite and understanding that police are just doing their job, I think, really is a very important thing. Mm -hmm. We hear from a lot of folks who are attracted to our work due to you know huge amounts of anxiety and distrust and often open hostility towards police. And we don't condone or encourage that at all. And you know that the level of hostility that we sometimes see in people actually really is one of the big threats to your own safety when you get into a police encounter. Uh, we have, there's a gentleman who, you know, who's a, a big busted super fan, uh, and he, uh, he told us when he saw Busted for the first time, he was in, in tears, he said. He's never seen anything like this before, and before then, he, had, he was always very hostile uh, to police officers. He was openly hostile, and he says, you know, since then, you know, I'm just much more calm. Um, and this is interesting because it, it sort of plays into the whole fight or flight mechanism. I mean, I, some folks who've seen uh, Busted, uh, they say, you know, when they're, they were in that police encounter, they were just so calm. It was like they were in the zone, you know, because mm -hmm. you're not panicking. You know exactly what you're going to do if he makes a move. I mean, it's sort of like talking to people who are fighters or something like that who engage in sort of combat sports you know they they're much they're calm in that moment you know of when normally you'd flee and panic but you're you're prepared to to handle the encounter 
um, people tell us. They're just, they feel like, they're, you know, you ever been in, like, in, in a fight? You know, have you ever, like, felt that, you know? But, like, you're in that space and you're in that zone, you know, and, but, and time slows down. But if you're trained, essentially, you're prepared, you know exactly what you're going to say, things will go much more smoothly, and the officer will read that on you, and it's much likely to result in nothing happening. You know, it's sort of like the best way to win the battle is not to fight it. I mean, a little it's, bit it's of zen kind of the same stuff. as their training. I mean, when they train yeah. for sure. violent confrontations and shooting and so forth, mm -hmm. it beca it's, if their training is good, it's pretty automatic at the time, and, mm -hmm. and, and they're competent at what they do because of the training. And with a citizen, it's almost, you're suggesting it's mm -hmm. almost the same thing. Yeah. Sure. You, you kind of go with the flow of your training at that point or what you've you've educated yourself mm -hmm. uh, about and uh, and you think maybe think about it later on mm -hmm. just as a police officer will after the encounter people tell me they they actually when they sleep they dream about police encounters <laughs> where they refuse to consent to a search and like that's how we know like we've right. gotten into people's heads right. with this stuff and a lot of it just mm -hmm. comes through sheer sort of re repetition, repetition. Right. Uh, showing the same you know idea but in a different scenario and really just the basic things officer i don't consent to a search officer am i free to go now officer i had nothing to say until i speak with my lawyer you know like these are the three sort of magic Mm -hmm. uh, terms you, you can right. use. And well, so. it would probably be good to mention at this point. After watching the free DV, the, the free video on the internet several times, uh, that they can go to your website, which we'll we'll put up here, um, and uh, and they can make a donation to uh, the um, the foundation. Um, and we have some inf some books and things later That's that right. we'll, we're going to show, but they can we get, have get, merchandise get and, and, and gifts uh, mm -hmm. that that people enjoy and that they can receive. Uh, well, as long as we're talking about it, why don't we just kind of go through what some of those things are? Sure. I'll, I'll put them up off camera here. But, oh, okay. Uh, well, of course, there's the video. We have uh, the DVD. It's a 45 minute uh, uh, educational DVD. I mean, it's fantastic for if if you're involved in a you know you have a, a Libertarian Party chapter or you you know you have. Uh, any sort of organization, a civic organization that you belong to, it makes for a fantastic event. All you have to do is put it in the DVD player. And I, I should play this at the next NAACP convention, I think. <laughs> Perhaps. Seriously, or, you know, equivalent sort of... more yeah. impressed with the With the, with the next one, right, absolutely. Right, right. Um, but it makes for a perfect event, and we recommend if people want to show it publicly, um, bring in a local defender either public or you know defender but someone who is a who is a defender um, they will always be the best equipped to handle the question and answer session which almost always involves very detailed well here's what happened to me and the police did this you know were they allowed to do that or what should I do or, or might even be talking about their own particular case or, or a friend or family's case so they are always the perfect uh, that's always the perfect pairing uh, busted DVD uh, defense lawyer. So, for the record, you're cool if somebody uh, shows this in a public setting, uh, is, is, but as long as there's, you know, local counsel uh, available to answer questions. And oh, well, that's not a requirement. Yeah. We, we tell people, uh, folks, email us daily. Say, oh, I'm going to play this at at my university. You know, I have a, a I have a libertarian chapter, an ACLU chapter, mm -hmm. or something like that. Is it okay for me to screen this? Do we need permission? And I write back, say, mm -hmm. you're free to to show this to anyone, anywhere, at any time. For for any reason, you know, for free, you know, and uh, what email address do you want them to contact you at? Um, they contact us at info at flexyourrights dot org. Right. Mm -hmm. well, you know, we like to hear from folks that are are you know hosting events involving the film, but I, I suspect that that these days most of the time we don't even find out about the events. Um, you know, we have something up on our website that says you can go ahead and. and screen the film anywhere you want and we'd love to hear how it goes mm -hmm. but right. you already have our permission so okay. for all the people that nonetheless email asking us for permission uh, you know I imagine there are screenings going on every week or two around the country somewhere as often as I hear from folks right kind of got you off the subject so there's the, the DVD you have other right we have a, we have our t-shirts uh, there's two kinds uh, one is the black got a warrant t-shirt it's available in uh Size, uh, do we have double XL or just yeah, XL? We, we have double XL to extra, uh, small. extra small for a very petite 
people. And we'd love to get rid of some of these extra smalls. <laughs> so if anybody <laughs> wants to put these shirts on their children, uh, please do, please. Absolutely. And we have, so there's the black got a warrant, and there's the white I don't consent to searches shirt. And, uh, and this, is, this is in a white. And they both have um, the text of the Fourth Amendment on the back for everyone to see. Um, we also have available our favorite book ever written on the topic called Beat the Heat by Katya Komisarek. She is a uh, defense uh, lawyer in, uh, in California. In fact, um, we didn't produce this, she produced it. In fact, th her book project was actually created simultaneously and independently of our project at about the exact same time. Right. So sort of this uh, co-evolution going on. Um, and we, f we discovered it and we found that she really you know, is right on target with the information. We come to many of the, have provided a lot of the same advice, but for those who like the DVD and want more in-depth information, um, the Beat the Heat book is perfect for your for your library, your coffee mm -hmm. table is a perfect uh, pair. Okay, <coughs> um, you mentioned earlier about pernicious myths. Oh yeah, you want to run down through it? Oh, we, we could probably talk about these for well, all day. Let's see. Uh, the let's the just, biggest. Uh, what do you want to go in the top? The biggest one? and best one is uh, is that uh, undercover officers have to tell you that they're <laughs> police if you ask. Um, Never ceases right. to amaze me how many people still believe that. You know, I still see it on websites out there. I mean, I've actually contacted people who I found on the internet. You know, spreading that information around. <laughs> kind um, of defeats the purpose of being undercover. We're trying to oh, find sure, patient but, zero. We're trying to find the first person oh, who started sure. this. And, right, exactly. And it's just it's just unbelievable to to think that you know there there are people going around telling this you know, myth to their friends and believing it. I mean, all you have to do is watch cops a couple of times and you'll see somebody get in the car when they're doing the undercover drug buys, you know. And you see the guy get in the car, are you a cop? Oh, no. You know, <laughs> you know moments later, everybody's getting arrested. Right. You know, right. Uh, I don't know where that one came from. I, you know, it's wow. unbelievable, but, you know, that's, that's one of the things we do is we, we have to go out there and, and fight back against the people that are confidently spreading misinformation right. on the subject. Um, they're out there and they believe themselves. Another one is sort of, it's, it's, it's bigger in a sense. I think it's more commonly believed. And it's the idea that because of um, the Patriot Act mm -hmm. um, and other, you know, very real uh, infringements on, on the Bill of Rights by the, the current administration, mm -hmm. um, that we no longer have any more rights. That you know, People email us and they, they say things like, don't you know the Fourth Amendment's been repealed by King George Bush? You know, they go off on these rants. Usually they're like in all caps. But <laughs> Patriot Act, Patriot Act, Patrick Henry. Yeah, and so, I mean, I, I totally understand the, the sentiment there, but this is actually quite dangerous because it really, I believe, leads people to this sort of uh, they just giving they're giving in you know they're throwing their hands in the air we no longer have our rights so there's no point of even trying when you're getting stopped by a local police officer you know for blowing a stop sign and they decide they want to search you you know that and they're fishing you know trying to get you to consent to a search they are not at all being impacted by Patriot Act power so the Patriot Act when it comes to 99.999% of likely law enforcement encounters, has nothing to do with it. So it's it's sort of hard to say. On one hand, you know, you know, the Patriot Act is dangerous, and, and there's bad things going on. But as far as you're concerned, it's very unlikely to have any impact on you right. whatsoever. So you know, assert your rights, your constitutional rights. The Fourth Amendment still does apply, but. Ninety-four, five percent of people waive their their Fourth Amendment rights during a police encounter. So if you know not to consent to a search, if you know how to say, "Officer, I don't consent to any searches," you are suddenly in the ninety-fifth percentile of understanding your constitutional rights during a police encounter. Um, so that is the, that's that's the other big um, myth that is out there that we're always trying to to combat. Um, well, there's the common myth of. Uh, Miranda myth, um, where you know when if you get arrested, police will generally read you your rights. Uh, everyone knows that in the movies you have the right and right to remain silent. Anything you say will be used against you. You know you have a right to an attorney. People people know this. It's actually been pretty well ingrained in pop culture. Um, but people uh, believe that frequently believe that if they get arrested and police do not read them their Miranda rights, 
Therefore, the charges just disappear into thin air. Uh, it's their get out of jail free card. This is a frequent myth. Um, that's not true. Um, police generally do read Miranda rights, but they're only required to do it if they're bringing you in for questioning uh, relating to to a crime. So that's a common myth where we, we generally are so trying to tell people. So if they don't formally question you, they don't have to do it. What if they informally, on the, on the way and in the car, yeah, I mean, engage you in conversation, try and... Uh, well, they should know better. I mean, anything that they get out of you in that situation is, you know... It, but in it, terms it, of Miranda. Right. In, 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 terms of, in terms of Miranda, you know, if they're not planning to formally interrogate you, they often aren't going to read you those rights. Yeah. And, and if in the meantime they do end up, you know, getting some information out of you, that'll come down to sort of a legal battle with your attorney. And generally by that point, if they've already, you know, they, they've had probable cause, you've consented to a search, they find contraband, for example, you admit that it's yours, at that point, reading your Miranda rights is largely ir ir irrelevant. Right. So that, that's, a, that's a common myth that, that we encounter. Um, and generally, you know, <laughs> we of course tell people, you know, if they are reading you your Miranda rights, really, you should remain silent. Mm -hmm. It's really smart. And they often say, like, do you choose to do you, you do you choose to waive these rights? And people will go, sure, you know, like, let me tell you more. And they try to explain it away. Oh, it was my friends. Well, what's your friend's name? Where does he live? Can we go visit him? I mean, like, it, it, this is how it spirals. And you, you can see this for yourself. I mean, really, I always am plugging the show, Cop. But the fact is, like, it really is a, a tremendous uh, uh, insight into like what goes on during police encounters. And someone who's seen busted, who understands their constitutional rights because of our materials, and watches cops, will find themselves yelling at the television screen. Not yelling at the police officers, who are, of course are being as respectful and courteous and professional as you can imagine they would ever be in front of a camera. Yet they're just as effective as uh, at getting people to waive their rights, but you'll be yelling at uh, at the at the, the suspects uh, who are consenting to searches. In fact, you know, they might even be bragging about what they have. You know, mm -hmm. they talk and talk and talk. You know, and and it's remarkable how easy it is for police officers to get people to to confess. All they just have to do is just let them talk and. People see police officers as their priest. They see them as a psychologist, as a father figure, and people really play into this, and they really spill their guts in, in very humorous and, of course, mm -hmm. you know, damaging ways. Sure. They, most often they mistake the officer for the jury, <laughs> and they think if they can, can convince, convince the, the yeah. jury <laughs> that, uh, that what they've done is for some reason okay that that'll somehow mm. get them out, out of trouble but the truth is you know everything that you're carrying on at that officer about is going right into the police report and it's not going to sound quite so pretty when the officer reinterprets <laughs> it for you you know if you go and, and give a passionate speech about drug policy reform <laughs> in the back of the squad car following a, a marijuana arrest the police report's going to say yes he stuttered angrily for 20 minutes about his passion for drugs <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, uh, yeah, if yeah. they actually read you your Miranda rights, you really better not be talking to them. Uh.